Hey guys, have you ever noticed a distracting blue, purple, magenta, or green color fringing on your images? And first wonder what in the world is this? And second, is it fixable? Well, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about chromatic aberration, also known as CA, and how to remove it across all of your images right within Lightroom, as well as some of the common mistakes that you'll wanna watch out for. Let's dig in. Chromatic aberration, what is it? Chromatic aberration is this sort of color fringing in our image, similar to like what you're seeing here, usually purple or magenta, or sometimes even green or blue in color. And this is gonna show up in a couple scenarios. One is where you have multiple lens elements that aren't perfectly aligned, and this is gonna vary lens by lens and typically be more noticeable towards the outer frame of your photo versus the inner part of the photo. And two, it's gonna happen in areas of very high contrast within your image. Typically the edges, as you see here in this veil detail, and this will actually happen a lot when shooting backlight portraits because the background is in that bright sun and the subject is on the shadow side. So that's when you'll see a lot of chromatic aberration showing up depending on the lens you're shooting. And also you tend to see it more with a shallow depth of field like this image where I'm shooting with a 1.4. So this is not something that is your fault. I get a ton of CA into my images and it's because I shoot a lot of backlight photos and I also happen to love the 85 millimeter 1.4 D, which unfortunately is known for not having its optics perfectly aligned. So this is something I'm always fixing. In fact, I used to painstakingly paint it out in Photoshop years and years ago, uh, but luckily I found a better, faster way using Lightroom and that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today. So we'll start by coming over into Lens Corrections Profile. And as you can see, I already have Remove Chromatic Aberration checked. And this is something, we'll go ahead and zoom back in to 200% here. I have checked across all of my images automatically upon import. And what Lightroom is doing is it's very smart and it automatically is reading our lens data and knows the common problems across many different lenses and attempts to correct for them automatically the best it can. So as you can see, it is pulling in my lens profile and is correcting for any things that it knows is common with that lens. Now, if I were to toggle this off and back on, you'll see that it isn't having that much impact on this part of the photo. And that's because it's not exact to your copy of the lens and it doesn't always do the best job with situational CA, such as areas of high contrast within the frame. So for that, we're gonna actually wanna come in and manually adjust because that automatic correction won't really be very helpful for us. So for that, we're gonna come over to the manual area and I'm going to select this color picker tool and hover right over where that magenta fringe is. And we'll click right there. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job. We'll go ahead and put that back. And then you can come down and adjust the amount slider up or down. Usually when it's touching the skin, uh, I try to not have areas of the skin too gray. Since we're at 200%, if I zoom out, it actually looks pretty good. I might bring the amount down just a little bit. And you can also adjust this hue slider to have more or less of the effect. And so that does a pretty good job if we do a side by side and zoom back in. You'll see it does a fairly good job of eliminating the CA in that part of the image. So it's super quick and easy fix, right? And this is where most people stop, but I want to take it a little bit deeper with you. But first, if you're new around here and you want to see more editing tutorials, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It is one of the best ways that you can support my channel and stay in the loop for future videos in my weekly Edit Together Tuesday series. All right, so next I wanted to show you how to use the sliders a little bit more to correct for common mistakes that I see when people use the Defringe tool. So for that, let's come over to another photo example and we'll go ahead and zoom in at 100% here, right on her hair, and you'll see we have some purple fringing as well as some green fringing. The great thing about the color picker tool is you can adjust for both in the same image. 
And so if I go ahead and select that and that, it's going to adjust the purple hue slider, and then it's also going to adjust our green hue slider. So it actually did a really good job there. You can see the before and after, and if I were to want to, because I still see a little bit of green here, adjust that amount and also adjust that so it brings in a little bit more of that green hue, and that looks pretty good. So the common mistake that I find is not keeping in mind that whatever color you're matching for will also impact other parts of the image with that same color. For instance, with the magenta, one thing that I commonly see is if you're adjusting for magenta in your image, you have to be very careful that it doesn't impact the lips of your subject by making them appear desaturated, dull, gray, and lifeless. So whenever using this for defringing magenta tones, I always like to zoom in on the lips when adjusting that hue slider and prioritize the lips over the CAA removal. I'd much rather my client look good than have all of the CAA removed. After all, we're not going to be seeing it if it's just a tiny bit in the image zoomed out. So I'd much rather the person look good. And a quick, easy confidence check for this is to hold down the alter option key when adjusting the slider. And you can actually see exactly where the defringing is happening. So if I adjust that purple up to add more to the image, I can see, mm, uh-oh, it's like starting to get her lips and gums. And if we zoom in here, you can see they start to go gray. This is actually super common that you'll see this kind of in the edges of the lips where it gets kind of this like gray, crispy zombie look. And that's something that we want to watch out for. We never want to be impacting our subject's skin. So we'll go ahead and dial that back. And what I like to do is just dial it back to the point where I'm not getting any of the lips in there, but I'm getting as much defringing as possible. And then, you know, we could always do the same with our greens. And I see that it's impacting her dress a little bit um, because I dialed it up. But if I zoom in here, there's not any weirdness going on with the greens in her dress. So I'm actually okay with that in this scenario. And here is our before and after with the fringing removed and keeping all that beautiful color in her face. Another common area I see this mistake is with blue fringe, which can impact the suit. So these are just some common things to look out for in your images. And that's it. The lens defringe tool is actually super easy and simple to use, but once you know how to use it, it can actually be a very powerful tool in your arsenal towards making images that look clean and pro. If you enjoyed this tutorial, drop a comment below letting me know and also share what you would love to see for any upcoming Edit Together Tuesday videos, and I will catch you next time.